The CBC Evening News. A very good evening to you. I'm Pearson Bowen. Environment Minister Dr. Dennis Lowe says used tires stored at Vaucluse St. Thomas are not responsible for the rising cases of mosquito-borne diseases like chikungunya. Dr. Lowe was responding to media reports made earlier this week which suggested that the tires could be at fault. He was speaking following a cocktail reception hosted by the Green Climate Fund at the Hilton Hotel last evening. Lisa Lord has the story. Dr. Law says the tires at the St. Thomas facility are treated to ensure that they do not have a negative impact on the environment. And he is adamant that the tires are not responsible for the increase in the mosquito population. Tires that are at loose, they've been there for many years. And we've not had a breakout like this before. So if you really study the issue and research it, and do the investigation that is necessary, you cannot conclude that because tires have been sitting there for so many years, that that's the reason now where you have chicken gunya challenges in St. Lucie or in St. Philip. Or, or any other part of the country. Dr. Law says no one person or entity can be held yeah. responsible for the current outbreak of chikungunya. Instead, it is the responsibility of all Barbadians to keep their surroundings clean. He says the ministry is in the process of finalizing two major pieces of legislation, the Environmental Management Act and the Waste Management Act, the latter of which will address issues like littering. We're also introducing um, monitors or, or waste police, persons who will go around and check the country to make sure that they're monitoring what's happening in various communities and so on. And uh, one of my areas of great concern is the practices of coconut vendors to ensure that uh, while they are allowed to carry on their trade, that they do so within the context of clean, keeping the environment clean. The environment minister has thrown out a challenge to health and environmental officers along with the police to ensure that laws are enforced. You can't find someone illegally dumping and just tell them to pick it up and take it back where they got it from. They should be charged for illegally dumping and whatever penalties obtained they should be made to pay. People who dump in gullies there are several tires and gullies that we're now trying to clean out. That is a problem as well. So I, I think that we have to get serious about the environment and ensure that all ends of our work are covered. Dr. Law says in the meantime, the ministries of the environment and health will continue to educate the public on ways they can reduce their chances of contracting these mosquito-borne illnesses. Lisa Lord, CBC News. And health officials say Barbados is currently facing an outbreak of chikungunya. The island's polyclinics are also struggling to cope with the surge in people exhibiting symptoms. 46 confirmed cases have been reported so far, and the island is awaiting results for 200 suspected cases. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Joy Sit John says consideration has been given to a number of proposals as Barbados seeks to control chikungunya. We have raised to the, to the PS and Minister the need for an additional doctor, um, especially in Winston Scott. We're talking about a chicken gunya line, and we also have the issue of reconfiguration of the poly, other polyclinics so that we do not have persons with chicken gunya mixing with persons who don't have the symptoms, trying to have that separation to stop the transmissions. Dr. St. John says protecting yourself from mosquito bites and reducing the breeding sites of the insects are essential. She also cautioned against using certain medications. And it's very important, I need to repeat it, that no one uses aspirin or non-steroidal drugs like Aleve and Advil if they're possibly in having a, a chikungunya disease. Luckily, this is not usually exhibiting hemorrhagic symptoms, but the pain, especially the joint pain, can be crippling. Minister of Health John Boyce says Barbados is working hard to contain the spread of chikungunya and welcome efforts made by citizens and the private sector. He says the disease can impact productivity. The impact is obvious but need bears repeating. Uh, it, the impact on our nation in terms of our workers, 
can be very debilitating. And one of the message we, messages we share with the public, along with our, our efforts to help to clean up, to help to fog our areas, et cetera, that are worst affected, is the need for them to act responsibly and be part of our solution going forward. Barbados is not considering at this time imposing any travel ban of citizens of West African countries affected with Ebola so far. The island has stepped up its surveillance and has cautioned residents about non-essential travel to affected countries. Minister of Health John Boyce says the island is also following international protocols as part of its response to the disease. He was speaking following a tour with health officials of the Medical Reception Center at St. Anne's Fort. This is something which you know we'll have to consider and I will have to uh, engage the team at the ministry before we arrive at a, a, a policy like, like that. But um, certainly the important thing is that our poor health is on full alert. They are examining the travel records of all visitors to Barbados um, and certainly in cases where there is any suspicion. There are certain protocols which are in place, including surveillance uh, that are being put in effect. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Joyce John defended the location of the isolation center at Enmore as she sought to clear up any misconceptions about the facility. She says there is a difference between an isolation and a quarantine facility. So isolation always goes along with symptoms and signs, suspected disease or confirmed disease. Quarantine goes along with contact but no symptoms and signs. So the, the difference between isolation and, and quarantine explains why the isolation center, and notice I'm not saying Ebola, I'm saying isolation because there are other dangerous infectious diseases that really should not be going into our one acute care hospital that could also be treated in a facility such as the isolation center. So that's why the siting of the isolation center close to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Chief of Staff of the Barbados Defense Force, Colonel Alvin Quinton, says there should, should there be a national disaster, the BDF can provide additional accommodation once a request is made. Since the establishment of our medical facility, there has always been a contingency that the female accommodation, which is the top floor um, of that facility, will be evacuated. So the females will have to find somewhere else to lay their heads. And if the Ministry of Health so wishes, we can convert um, that accommodation to support whatever um, requirements the ministry may have. So we can um, have at least 30 bed spaces. St. Lucia has become the second country within the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States to place an immediate ban on nationals from Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone entering the country because of the deadly Ebola virus. A government statement today said, given the extent of the outbreak of the Ebola virus in those West African countries, Prime Minister Dr. Kenny Anthony has advised the Commissioner of Police, Vernon Francois, to implement with immediate effect a prohibition on persons from those countries who wish to travel to St. Lucia. The Prime Minister said that St. Lucia would continue to monitor the outbreak and has allocated resources to prepare for any possible threat. Earlier, St. Vincent and the Grenadines announced a ban on visitors from the West African countries. Meanwhile, Grenada is considering suspending travel visas to nationals from the West African countries of Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea. The move is to prevent any occurrence of the Ebola virus there. Grenada's government says the measure is being discussed against the background that there is no readily available vaccine to protect, protect oneself against the virus. The government says the introduction of just one case could potentially undermine the health and financial infrastructure of the country. Management of the Barbados Community College today met with the National Union of Public Workers for a demand for a meeting, but neither party has so far disclosed the outcome. Just after 10 this morning, the two sides sat down at the negotiating table at the BCC to thrash out issues that almost led to industrial action. 
Union members led by General Secretary Dennis Clark emerged from the talks just before one in the afternoon. When approached by CBC, Mr. Clark said he had another meeting to attend and would later comment. Efforts to reach BCC principal Gladstone Best proved futile. CBC News understands that on the agenda for discussion were possible layoffs at the college and a clause in the contracts for part-time tutors, which Mr. Clark has described as offensive. Mr. Clark was expected to put a number of cost-cutting measures on the table during the discussions. More news ahead in just a moment, but first, we'd like to hear from you on this question. Should Barbados consider imposing a travel ban on Africans? Text yes or no to short code 8111. The results at the end of the news. It's not often that research and technology combine to create an innovation that revolutionizes an industry. Introducing Ultima Plus from Harris Paints, combining not one, but five new problem-solving technologies in one can. Coverfast technology gives you brighter colors in fewer coats. Self-prime technology means no primer over more surfaces. Easy Breathe technology gives a better air quality and lower odor. Mildew Guard technology keeps colors fresh by resisting fungus growth for longer. Colorless technology makes your color stronger and more resistant to fading. Best by test and quality, Ultima Plus can be tinted to any color or custom match to the exact perfect shade. Thousands of colors, five new technologies, all in one can. Only from Harris Paints, the Caribbean champions of color. Ultima Plus, your ultimate paint solution. Available at dealers island-wide. Chikungunya fever is transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquito. To prevent mosquito breeding, check your premises inside and outside on a weekly basis for any collections of water that will likely breed mosquitoes. These can include buckets, drums, tires, underground and above water storage tanks, and other containers, such as block holes, animal watering containers, and tarpaulins. Remember, let's keep chikungunya at bay. Community Files Please be advised that the Police Complaints Authority is at its new location on the ground floor, Jones Building, Webster Industrial Park, Wilde St. Michael. The new telephone number is 621-0110, while the fax remains as 429-4057. More than 7,000 Barbadians have reportedly overstayed their visit in Trinidad and Tobago and are now classed as illegal immigrants. That figure is contained in statistics released by Trinidad's National Security Minister Gary Griffith. 7,169 Barbadians are said to be among the more than 110,000 illegal immigrants. The highest number comes from Guyana with more than 25,000 illegal immigrants, followed by Jamaica with just over 19,000. Other nationals listed to be living illegally in Trinidad and Tobago are Vincentians, Grenadians, Colombians, Chinese, Filipinos, St. Lucians, Indians, Dominicans, Surinamese, Cubans, and Nigerians. The security minister said he was not on a witch hunt, but said once immigration is able to locate those people, they will be deported to their home country. The Aaron and Christina Trust Foundation is still providing tablets to primary school students, this time 57 class 3 students of the St. Alban Primary received Samsung Galaxy 4 tablets. Founder of the foundation, Aaron Trust, says students should give back to the community. We feel as Barbadians that we do have a duty uh, to contribute back to our country and back to our society. And we do hope that you'll remember this experience and when you get older and you have the chance and the opportunity that you will uh, remember this and will find some way. It may not be presenting tablets to children, but there's always a way to do something to give back. Uh, remember, you're all getting uh, you know, free secondary education. We still have, are fortunate to have free health care to an extent. So there are things as Barbadians that we should be grateful for. Parliamentary representative for St. James North, Edmund Hinkson, says young people should strive to become independent. He also told students science and technology is the way to go. 
you can use the tablets and science and technology, as I said, to become independent, to be able, when you get big now, and when you are finished with school and, and all your, your educated academically, to be able now to employ yourself, to find your own jobs, your own employment, and to be able to employ your friends and other people and not have to depend on someone else, whether it is government or an individual, for a job. The Governor General has paid a visit to students of the All Saints Primary School. The students welcomed him with song, poetry and gifts. He told students that he chose the school since it was located in an area where he grew up. He also shared his childhood experiences with the students. Meanwhile, the Governor General advised the students to engage in positive activities, stay focused, and do all that they could to be successful. You may encounter difficulties that may sometimes seem insurmountable, but you must not give up. You must try and try again until you succeed. I would urge students at this school and students everywhere to seek always to excel at whatever you do. Aim high, be a good character. To do so, you should keep away from drugs and violence. Regional News Next.